Hey friends, I just wanted to come on today and address some um, recent conversations and comments I've had um, just on different social media channels and seeing a lot of these same questions and conversations come up in brain retraining circles. And the topic is on uh, toxic positivity and gaslighting with brain retraining. So I think we all kind of know what medical gaslighting is from dealing with chronic illness and especially in the medical community and doctors. But what I'm noticing is kind of a trend and I don't know if it's other brain retraining programs I'm not familiar with because I've only really done DNRS and kind of dived into Gupta a little bit um, and done a lot of, you know, trauma-informed healing myself and energy healing, but I'm noticing this trend that kind of takes the core concepts of brain retraining and is twisting them into like toxic positivity and gaslighting. And I'm seeing a lot of this in like discussion boards um, like Facebook groups, different communities like on Instagram uh, related to brain retraining and illness. And so I wanted to give my opinion as, um, you know, someone who actually is, is in the counseling profession, trauma-informed profession, and someone who's dealt with these issues and has used brain retraining pretty successfully, but still does struggle with certain symptoms. Um, and, you know, I worked in the medical field for a long time, even though it was in a psychological component, I did complex medical care as well. So my opinion on this is, you know, so for example, we'll say someone posts a question on, um, you know, I'm doing these rounds every day, but, um, you know, I, I've been, you know, coming down with this cold or I can't seem to get over, um, you know, this, this kind of virus I have, it's getting into this like long haul symptom and, and everyone jumps on like, well, you're not believing in your rounds. Are you doing your rounds? Are you committed? <laughs> like you're too symptom focused. That's why you're sick. And it's like, guys, like we're still going to get sick. Like we're, we're normal humans doing brain retraining. Doesn't make us super human. Um, it's okay to have some symptom flare ups. The, the key component is using positivity and trying to change overall neural pathways and limbic system state so that those flare ups or those random times that we get sick or injured doesn't turn into a new negative feedback loop that becomes ingrained in our body and our thought process. So for example, like, yeah, like it, you could catch a cold and that's going to make you feel crappy for a couple days. Now, what I do is if I feel a cold coming on, I like double down on my brain retraining rounds. I do meditation. I work on limbic system stuff. Maybe I'll do some intermittent fasting, which I know for me helps my immune system and my energy. Um, but like, I still get sick, right? Like I don't get as sick as I, maybe I used to get. Like when I was in the midst of like my healing crisis with mold issues and Lyme and chronic fatigue issues, um, if I got a cold, I would be like down. Like, I mean, that would flare up symptoms for me and that flare up would last for months. So like doing the retraining does like definitely damper down those symptoms. And most of the reaction we get when we talk about like cytokine storms and histamine reactions, most of the reactions we get to like cold or flu is, is our immune system either overreacting or reacting just where it needs to. So yeah, brain retraining and limbic retraining definitely can help us get over a cold or illness quicker. It can definitely help us recover from an illness in an inflammation-based way or a histamine-based way quicker, but we don't magically not get sick. Like let's not attack people to be like, oh yeah, you're struggling from that cold. You must not be doing your brain retraining correctly. Like, come on. Like, so I, I really wanted to address like that's that's where toxic positivity and almost like gaslighting come into play. And also some of the illnesses people are healing from by their very nature, it doesn't matter how much positive thinking you do. It doesn't matter how much you stick to a diet. It doesn't matter how much you avoid your triggers or learn to dampen down your response to your triggers. There are certain medical diagnoses that people in our community are using brain retraining for that, that don't have a a hard and fast cure. And so it's okay to be in the brain retraining community and be using these skills for an illness that you're going to have flare ups for. The whole purpose of it is to make your life more positive and livable and enjoyable and manageable. So for someone even that has maybe um, any autoimmune disease or inflammatory disease, like something like, I mean, I have Lyme and I'm not deluding myself to think that all of my Lyme symptoms are going to go away just from brain retraining. I do a lot of other um, holistic interventions, but I know people that are using brain retraining for MS or Parkinson's and like there's lesions on their MRI. The lesions aren't necessarily going to go away. All their symptoms aren't going to go away from brain retraining, but they've made leaps and bounds where now they're like 
not using a walker anymore. They feel like they're able to go out on a walk in the heat of the day. Maybe it doesn't trigger their symptoms for them to spend time with their family. They're able to dampen down their response that their limbic system made them feel like they were in crisis mode all the time. But again, we cannot, we cannot always be saying, oh, you're talking about symptoms. Oh, you're having a flare up. Don't acknowledge it. Don't acknowledge it. That is toxic positivity. That is gaslighting. And I do understand like a big piece of DNRS in the beginning is that you say, I'm not going to have any symptoms focused thoughts. I'm going to even write a letter to my friends and family. I'm going to say, don't talk about my symptoms to me. I'm just basing my reality off of healing. All of our rounds are focused on I am healed. Here I am. Everything is great. I'm visualizing when I'm healed. But we also have reality testing, right? Like we, if we gaslight ourselves and delude ourselves into unrealistic healing expectations, then that kind of sets us up for something that maybe isn't attainable. And then that's a huge letdown if that doesn't work. So as a therapist, I do specialize with people with chronic pain and illness. Some people have terminal illnesses or some people have illnesses that, that they are gonna be stuck at a certain pain level. And what I do is I practice something called acceptance and commitment therapy. And with that main focus of that, it's pretty complex, so I can't sum it up in a YouTube video all at once, but with acceptance and commitment therapy, the main premise is we accept where we are, but then we identify our core values and we commit to doing whatever we need to do in our daily life to live out those values every day. So it's very well aligned with brain retraining, but it starts with an acceptance of where we are and where we're starting. And we say, even if I never see improvement in some of what I'm dealing with right now, um, as far as like symptoms, right? Like the unchangeable things or what we consider to be unchangeable. We say, but I'm still committing to having a full life and I'm committing to seeing the changes I can make. And I'm writing out my core values and the things that matter to me. And every day I'm focusing on those instead of focusing on lack or disease or distress or pain. So how do we implement that with brain retraining is we need to have a realistic view. We can't jump down people's throats if they talk about a symptom. We can like gently remind them and we can kind of prompt like, hey, is that like a, a pathway of the past as DNRS would call it? Are you, are you letting yourself go back into a negative headspace? Um, and is that going to affect your healing in a negative way? Oh, there's a truck going by. It's really loud. <laughs> you know, or is that something that we all might struggle with? Do you have a cold? Did you have exposure to something that did cause a flare up? Like we don't become impervious to like mold and toxic chemicals with DNRS. We dampen our response, but there's certain environments that anyone goes in, even without a limbic system injury, and they're gonna not feel good, right? So certain allergies, you can't brain retrain away an anaphylactic, you know, peanut reaction. Like it's not gonna happen. That person might have an accidental exposure need to take a Benadryl EpiPen, go to the hospital. And that may flare up your limbic system for a while. Your limbic system, if, if your limbic system stopped going into fight or flight mode altogether, that's a whole other problem. Our limbic system is designed to put us into fight or flight mode. Um, it, it just bothers me to see people having this unrealistic expectation. And I think it d deters others who want to start their journey. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever read The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker. It's kind of on a different topic, but it talks about trusting intuition. It talks about how the limbic system exists for a reason. If you're walking down the street at night and someone approaches you and you get this crazy gut feeling and your hair stands up on the back of your neck and you're like, this is not good, that's fight or flight serving a purpose. And if that person would go at you and you're able to fight back and run away, that's your amygdala signaling fight or flight, releasing adrenaline and endorphins so that you can get out of there and you can fight back and you can run. We don't want to turn that off. We just want to make sure that we're mediating it correctly. We want to make sure we're not overreacting to benign stimuli. Not everything's a benign stimuli. If you catch a cold and you're really sick, yeah, we can use brain retraining to say, don't overreact. This is a cold. Everyone gets colds. It is okay. I'm going to put these tools in my toolkit that make me feel better. And this is not going to be a major setback. And now I visualize next, by next week, I'm healed. I'll be doing this. You know, we can do that. But again, it's the, it's the toxic positivity. It's the gaslighting. We have to kind of, I think, as a whole community come together and say, it's okay that you might be a person who uses brain retraining and gets rid of seven out of 10 of your most major symptoms. And maybe three of them are unchangeable. 
but how do we still commit to saying that brain retraining still has given me so much and brain retraining still might improve my quality of life substantially even if I still have some symptoms and not get like jumped on if someone brings up like yeah it doesn't work for this but cool it worked for everything else um I don't know I wanted to jump on and say it it might be controversial I might get kind of <laughs> some flack for saying it but I just wanted to mention it and I hope it normalizes for some people that are still dealing with symptoms or that have dealt with any pushback in our community because I, I think we need to open up the brain retraining community and welcome anyone who wants to use these skills to feel better without unrealistic expectations or, or too much pressure. So anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome day full of healing and love and peace and I'll uh, talk to you guys soon.